The 1980s brought about an important discovery in global health, the discovery of the virus that causes acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or AIDS for short. This virus is a human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV. Today, nearly 37 million people in the world live with HIV, and Centers for Disease Control estimates that 1.2 million live in the United States, and that number is growing. In the 80s, being infected with HIV was considered a death sentence, leading to AIDS and a whole slew of other complications before death. But over the past 30 years, we developed numerous medicines to treat HIV, transforming it from a death sentence to a lifelong illness, similar to diabetes. Unfortunately, there's still no cure for HIV. You see, with the medicines we have now, we can eliminate HIV from the blood, but there are areas in the body in which this virus can live, thrive, multiply. And these areas are known as HIV reservoirs, which I've displayed here in the center section of the screen. One of the goals of our laboratory is to determine whether the medicines we have can penetrate into these reservoirs, such as the brain, the lymph node, and the gut. To study this, we measure the distribution of the drug within these problematic areas. In fact, we developed a novel imaging technique that allows us to visualize the distribution within this intricate tissue. For instance, preliminary results from the lymph node, which I have here on the right side of the screen, demonstrate the drug distributes into the tissue, as indicated by green. However, this distribution is not uniform, and you're able to see that from the black spaces of the figure. Furthermore, HIV also distributes into the tissue, as indicated in red. Now, while you may ideally expect there to be a perfect overlap of drug and HIV, or green and red, what we saw in the lymph node was that the distribution of HIV may be independent of that of the drug. In essence, HIV may be hiding in the reservoir. And this is an important finding. Perhaps one of the reasons why we do not have a cure for HIV is that the medicines we have may not always get to where HIV is hiding in the reservoir. On the basis of this work, it is clear that the future development of drug must focus on targeting the hidden HIV in these reservoirs. And our laboratory is expanding the knowledge into the genital tract and the spleen. Ultimately, this work may contribute significantly to the development of a cure for HIV. Thank you.